Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is part three of a three-part video series, and the last part of my struggle to get this Essex hot air engine running. I hope you watch part one and part two, or you, may, you might not understand just what I'm doing here, so go back and check those out if you have not already. And I've made a little progress, but this episode is do or bust. I'm not going to go any farther with it. I'm a little bit discouraged, but yet I was a little bit optimistic by what I did here in the last 15 minutes. Now, I've been working here for two hours off camera, and let me show you what I have done to this point. All right, let's take a look at the engine, and if you watched part two, you will remember that I had kind of determined, or, or hinted at least to myself, that the cooling tank was not cooling this end of the engine because this got quite hot and it should not because there's a water jacket around here and one of the principles matter of fact the main principle I guess of a hot air Stirling type engine is that there be a temperature differential that is one end hot and the other end cold and the air that is the fluid move back and forth between the two chambers and by doing that, we are producing a, a vacuum on one end and a, a slight amount of pressure on the other end. So, I spent considerable time here, first of all, trying to flush out the tank determined, uh, to determine if there was a blockage. So finally, I wasn't getting anywhere and I just plain disconnected the darn thing. There's a union here and a union up higher. And I decided that uh, I'm just going to temporarily reroute it, not going to use this, set it off to the side, and there was a lot of blockage down here in this valve, and then I ultimately took an air hose and I blew it through there, and I blasted out a pretty good slug of uh, sediment or whatever it was from over the years. So before I put this back into the circuit, I'm just going to pump water and I've got a two gallon bucket over there with an aquarium pump in it and some tubing and the engine is sitting at a little bit of an angle so the water doesn't run out of that pipe and then out of this spigot here the water comes and I'm going to catch it down below in a one gallon bucket. Boy do I have a mess here. So let me get it heated up and see what happens here. We're going to try it. Again, uh, I am using white gas camp fuel, Coleman fuel as my fuel. I have tried kerosene. I have tried alcohol. They all seem to produce the same amount of heat. The kerosene was smoky and smelly. I think white gas is my preferred fuel. So I've just turned the pump on. It's entering through the top, and there's the spig, and I got water all over the place. Now I'm going to proceed to light the burner. I'm not going to show any of that. You've seen that before, and I'll be back in about five minutes after it preheats. It does take a while to get these hot air engines started and up to heat. Okay, five minutes has come and gone. The engine is preheating, water is flowing through it, and it's quite cool on this end, as it should be. And you can see it wants to run, but it's as if there's not quite enough heat there. I'll let it heat just a little more, and you can see the water coming out. It's a beautiful fall day. We got just a little bit of Indian summer. It's probably the last day or two that I can work out here in the garage in comfort without my car hearts on. Now this has happened uh, over and over on the that the connecting rod comes loose from the crank pin. There are no keepers or anything on there, so I'm not sure about the original design.
Let's take another look. And we got the shop dog snooping around. You know what? He wants a drink of some of that antifreeze water. He's going duck hunting tomorrow. Drake. Come on over. Come on, boy. One more try here. Actually, it's running fairly good. But it's as if, I said, as I said before, there's not quite enough heat. So I'm going to apply some propane here and see what happens. Because it should run continuously. And the connecting rod came off again. So time for some necessary repairs. But what I've shown you here is that apparently it's, it is going to run. So I'm going to shut her down cool it off and go ahead and reconnect the cooling system and uh, then we'll try it again. Well, the burner is on right now and my thermal siphon is working because this pipe is quite cold because it's 60 degrees here in the garage whereas this one is warm and the water jacket is not cold, but it certainly isn't hot. It's room temperature, probably, right now. Hot, cold. So it is recircling, recirculating and cycling through the radiator cooler. So that's fixed. Also, I fixed this because, remember, Bubba had that in upside down such that the oil hole was on the bottom. So I finally got that reversed. And I finally got the burner such that it seems to be burning all right and correctly. However, it is not producing enough heat to run the darn engine. And that's what I do not understand other than the bore could be worn so there's not a good enough fit anymore for it to run. And I can get it to run by adding auxiliary heat with a torch, but you shouldn't have to. So I'm going to take the burns o matic and apply a little heat here, and I'll be right back. And you can see it will run for a while with auxiliary heat. But it seems to be temperamental. Well, it runs a little bit, but it requires the extra heat of this torch. And I'm debating on whether I should tear into the thing, remove this burner, and put in a propane burner. But I really do not want to change the overall character of the engine for future generations. But you can see now it wants to quit. But it did run for, what, 30, at least 30 seconds. And you know I've got it probably hotter than it should be because the oil is burning out of the cylinder, smoking, but without that extra heat, it absolutely will not run. Do you remember in one of the other parts, I think part two, when I looked into the bore here, I showed you a brass sleeve that starts, I think, about here, and I, I suppose it runs all the way to the other end, I don't really know, but upon thinking about that while I was uh, laying in bed, I believe that that is a, a highly conductive piece of brass, which is actually copper, that will draw the heat away from this end and into the water jacket here where the heat will get carried away. Again, warm, and down here, quite cool. Running pretty good right now, but look at the smoke coming out of that bore. And then it stopped.
Okay, I'm going to shut it down. Start by turning the fuel off. And then I'll turn off the burner down here. And again, that's what I'm using for fuel. White gas. And now it's flaring up. Ooh, that's hot. I think I told you several times during this video series that I had made a bunch of uh, hot air engines over the years, and there are some videos. Boy, somebody's out there mowing. Boy, they may, I hope that doesn't... Well, never mind. Anyway, let me run this right now. And the, this is the dis displacer side, and this is the power piston. And they are 90 degrees out of phase. So in other words, when that crank is in the vertical 12 o'clock position, you'll find that this one is in the 3 o'clock position. And we can reverse the rotation by changing the timing, which I'm not going to do. This little engine will burn nicely on sterno or just with a little bottle cap full of alcohol or just about any kind of fuel. Starts up right away. Runs beautifully, but there's no cooling system. So once this all gets heated up, it will stop running. And it'll run for just a little while on the residual heat. Well, I hope you enjoyed this three-part video series. It's not a total success. Matter of fact, it's a semi-failure in that I couldn't get it to run a little better. But you did see it run. And, uh, you know, it's just 110 years old and needs an overhaul. And that's beyond the scope of this video. Now, at the end of the video, there are several still pictures, including the patent drawing and the patent number for anyone that wants to study this a little further. But uh, anyway, I hope this involved you a little bit in hot air engines. And you know, looking up at the monitor, <laughs> my lips are black. That's from blowing on uh, <laughs> the water e heat exchanger. And uh, now I realize it, but that's it, I wasn't eating licorice. Hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, I have 13 other shop videos. So I'll see you next time. This is Mr. Pete.